What's up everybody, Kinetic here and welcome back to Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. I got a really cool demonstration video prepared for you guys here on the Kanai Cube. I'm on the uh, the PTR for patch 2.3 in Diablo 3 and it's been crazy trying to get things done here in the PTR because there's huge lines of people waiting. There's like a massive queue of like anywhere from like two to i've heard some people are waiting like seven hours or something like that to be able to get into like some of the new higher torment levels like torment 10 and stuff like that it's just crazy right now guys but i've got like i said i've got a video here prepared for you and um let's just get to it because there's actually quite a lot to show uh you may notice that the, the this armor set this is the new uh blessed uh hammer crusader set uh, i've also got the shield and the weapon do this this build is so pimp. I'm gonna make a uh, separate video talking about the build that I'm working with and stuff like that. But I think you'll kind of get a little bit of maybe where I'm going with the build uh, just from this uh, demonstration with the Kanai Cube because, well, what I'm about to do with it is uh, is pretty awesome sauce. So yeah, um, in case you don't even know like what the Kanai Cube is, let me just go quickly go over that. Uh, the Kanai Cube is, from a lore standpoint, it's actually what the Haradra Cube was designed from. The Kanai Cube is apparently the original artifact um, that was uh, possessed by the immortal king Kanai of the barbarians in, uh, in Ariat, right? The protectors of the world stone, of course. And there's like, there's a whole new area, right? The ruins of Sesheron, which is the former barbarian's home. You actually get to go there and find the cube guided by Zoltan Kuhl. Yes, Zoltan Kuhl isn't dead. Of course he isn't. Uh, he never really dies. His spirit seems to, uh, to linger. Well, he's very interested in the cube and he wants you to go find it for him. So you go on a little mini quest to go find the cube. You get the cube, you come back here, and now it's in every town that uh, that you visit. So this is what it looks like. I've got it. Let's do this, right? Okay, so this is what the UI looks like. Pretty simple stuff. You've got uh, uh, some different slots here where you're going to place items. You'll place, for example, the legendary items in here and um, the materials that you need in order to do the different things that you need. The Kanai Cube actually does a lot of different things. And according to the information that I have uh, over here on my second screen, this is just like seven or so of the recipes that they have so far for the Kanai Cube. So Blizzard is still thinking of new ideas apparently, uh, new recipes of things that the Kanai Cube will be able to do. But what it does already is absolutely crazy, right? One of the things that we first heard about is how you can, for example, take a, a legendary item. Now this is the new one hand uh, flail for crusaders that increases attack speed of Blessed Hammer by 100%. That's a flat 100, right? Um, so what it what this does, right, is I can take, for example, and I can put this legendary item here, plus some materials, and I can salvage that legendary item and extract its power, right? The legendary power of increasing the attack speed by the Blessed Hammer. I can actually extract that and then apply it here to this slot and then it will act as a passive power. Much like we have passive powers for our characters, that's what you can kind of look at these powers here. And, and the same goes for your character powers. Like you can't have two of the same passive on your character. You can't have two of the same uh, effect from legendary. So for example, you can't double up Ring of Royal R Grandeur or anything like that. It's, it's just not gonna work. Uh, another one of the catches is this does not apply to set pieces as well you can't extract powers from any of the uh, the set pieces and be able to apply those but aside from those tiny limitations it's still there's some amazing things that can be accomplished from this and you'll be able to assign a weapon an armor and a jewelry so one of each type of of uh, equipment right you'll be able to add one of those powers in here uh, one of the things that I, I was kind of funny is when I first ran up to the cube, I was like so excited to like get started. I didn't even <laughs> remember that I actually need these. These aren't really new crafting materials. These are actually old crafting materials that used to be in the game when Reaper of Souls first came out. Um, these had to be collected from monsters in certain areas, and you would use these to craft uh, legendary armor pieces or legendary weapons and things like that. Like, for example, the crimson armor set you needed to collect a certain item from an enemy and stuff like that. Well, long story short, Blizzard took those out because there was a ton of them and they were taking up a lot of stash space. So they just removed those completely which kind of made legendary items not feel very legendary because 
they was it was so easy to get them it was, it's like they might as well be rare items with when they're that easy to get but anyway I digress um, <laughs> but they brought them back right for the purpose of giving you another material that uh, that you can use for a couple of these processes if we actually click here on this book this is the recipe book for the Kanais cube and you can see here are the recipes for the archive of Talrasha extract legendary power so what it will require is uh, one legendary item in this case I'm going I'm going to demonstrate this using this second Johanna's uh, argument that I have I've, I've actually got one here but I want to extract the power from from here because I think I can do some cool stuff with it um, oh one of the other things I definitely want to mention is in the case of where legendary powers that can be extracted from an item maybe has a variable amount okay so for example the new guard of Johanna shield has a variable percentage of 200 to 250. Now what Blizzard is saying is that when you extract that power and, and you'll have it available as a as a passive ability, you'll get the maximum effect from that, which I've, I'm, I'm curious then because in some of these cases, you actually want the uh, the lesser amount of, uh, of perhaps the percentage or the, the less least amount of time or something like that okay so for example the belt of trove right every six seconds call down bombardment this can be up to eight well we don't want the maximum of up to eight seconds we want those bombardments coming as quick as possible so i hope that blizzard is paying attention to the, to these little things right because they could they could definitely make a big difference but anyway um, where was I? Okay, so right here's the list of the the items that we need. We need one rune, nightshade, tapestry, flesh, and water, and you get these by doing bounties. Yes, your adventure mode is now relevant again. Um, no longer are you just looking for ring of royal grandeurs, um, and you don't even need them f for uh, for the keys for the rifts. They're those are non-existent now. Well, maybe they're still in your bag, but you don't need keys to go into rifts anymore. So now, adventure mode, I'm really going off on, on, on a tangent here, but adventure mode really now is about uh, farming materials, not just these materials, but you'll get lots of crafting materials now from farming adventure mode, plus gold, plus guaranteed legend, yes, guaranteed legendaries from Haradric caches now, plus bonus caches, it, that, that's a whole nother topic but anyway that's where you're gonna get these materials from is from doing bounties right and it's not that difficult you, you know how quick you can farm uh, these bounties and now with the bonus chests, you of you actually get bonus materials so it's even faster anyway so here we go we've got those plus death breath yet yes they've finally made death breaths uh, <laughs> like like usable now uh, important now so now that's what I'm gonna do um, <clears throat> if I now this is actually my first time right this is all in my inventory so I, I'm wondering if it will autumn it probably won't right okay transmute field right so we actually have to put that stuff into the uh, into the box that's actually that's that makes a whole lot of sense actually <laughs> all right so there we go now we've got the the item that we need I'm just gonna throw all these in here. I I, I seriously doubt it will use all of them, right? <laughs> all right, so I think that's everything that we need. The Death's Breath, one, two, three, four, five, six items plus the legendary. So this should work, right? This, I mean, this is PTR, so maybe it will completely, I don't know, choke and steal all my stuff. I don't know, but anyway, here we go. Crossing my fingers, transmute. Extracting a legendary power will consume the legendary item. Extract the power anyway. Yes. Oh. Okay, cool. So it left the rest of the materials there inside of the uh, the box. That's badass. And notice now that the um, the weapon slot is actually glowing now. So is this? Yes, it is. Oh, that's so badass. Oh, wow. Look at that. You can I the of course I've never seen this before. This is so badass. Okay, so we've actually got pages and pages of of what we can actually extract and put into this slot. Okay, that answers my question. Where do uh, where do shields go? Do they apply as uh, armor? Or do they apply as uh, weapons? They apply as weapons, unfortunately. 
Uh, so that's probably true for uh, other classes as well. For example, quivers and uh, mojos and stuff like that. Those will probably go into the uh, the weapon slot. Okay, so back on page two, uh, Johanna's argument. And I think that's all I have to do. I can now close this. And now that's that. Okay, so now... Here's, here's something interesting that they also did. Not on Paragon, sorry. Uh, back in details, here we go. If you scroll down to the bottom there, we can see uh, the Kanai's powers, uh, Johanna's argument, and then where the other things would go. So now I can actually take this off, and I can, for example, put in uh, Justinian's Mercy. Now here's my, I, one of the ideas that I'm going to experiment for Crusader is that uh, Justinian's Mercy, Blessed Hammer gains the effect of Dominion Rune. I think that this sounds like a really, really cool idea to combine Johanna's Argument with, uh, with Blessed Hammer uh, and the Dominion Rune automatically applied. That way I can, for example, <clears throat> I can have Thunderstruck. This sounds uh, like a badass idea. Okay, so now I've got Thunderstruck and they follow me around. That is sick! I love it! Oh my god, yes. Yes! I mean, one of the things that, uh, that, that was sort of the weakness, or, or always with, uh, with Blessed Hammer, even with, um, even with this Thunderstruck rune, is that as you're moving, they're always, you know, you're always leaving them behind unless you have the Dominion rune. Now I, I can go ahead and have the Dominion rune, plus Johanna's argument, plus the Thunderstruck rune. That's just insane. This is just one tiny example of, of what the Kanai Cube can do. And I'm telling you, man, over the past like 30 some hours now since I've been playing um, on and off with Diablo and, or waiting in queue or something, my mind is just going nuts with like all these crazy ideas. Like, there's just so much possibility, so many new fun builds now that I think that are going to be born from the Kanai's Cube. Bravo. Bravo Blizzard. All right, let's 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 keep going, right? All right, so uh, another idea that I had. Here's another one. Cam's Rebuttal. Now, with the uh, the the light set for Crusaders, what they're trying to get you to do is they're trying to get you to combine Blessed Hammer with uh, with Falling Sword. And this is probably the most badass sword for Falling Sword. Uh, Falling Sword can now be used again within four seconds before the cooldown is triggered. I would love to have that as a uh, as another legendary power. So let's go ahead and not my potion. There we go. We're gonna put this stuff in here. Transmute. <clears throat> nice. Okay. So now what this will allow me to do is have uh, a, a bit of but a little bit a bit a bit a bit of both, right? What I can do is go back to my uh, my Justinian's Mercy, right? And so now I've still got all the awesome power except for. Um, the Dominion Rune, of course, unless I want to go back to it, which I do, <laughs> uh, I think. The Dominion Rune, just for example, right? <clears throat> so now I've still got that, right? I've still got all the awesome power minus the Thunderstruck part. Um, but now I've also got two freaking Falling Swords that I can do at the same, uh, at the same time. More or less at the same time. That's, I, I'm really liking that combination as well. I'm going to be practicing, uh, testing out, you know, which is more powerful, which is just more fun uh, as well, because numbers are one thing, but fun factor is certainly another. Okay, so there's uh, an, an idea of what you can do with, uh, with weapons. What I want to do next is actually play around with the armor one as well. So I get the belt of the trove every... Now we're going to find out what happens. Every six seconds, call down bombardment, all right? So... We're going to add our items, our death breath. That was everything, right? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, here we go. Transmute. Extract the power. Okay, so now it's an armor built to the trove. Okay, so now this is, this is what I was thinking. The String of Ears is probably one of, if not the best belts for uh, Crusaders right now because of the secondary ability. This is not a legendary power, but the secondary ability is really, really nice. Reduces damage from melee attacks by up to 30%. This is fantastic, especially, I think, uh, for a build like this. The String of Ears is going to be amazing, but it would be great to have like a, another little power on top of that. And I thought Belt of the Trove would be really, really nice. I, I like the idea that you can have this. Okay, so now it says right there, every six seconds. Cool. Good job, Liz. So they... they 
they manage to fit, to tweak the individual items to make sure that you're getting the minimum when you want the minimum and the maximum when you want the maximum. All right, cool. Now, you know, everybody was thinking this as soon as they heard of the Kanai Cube, the Ring of Royal Grandeur, right? And Unity. I, and I'm probably a bit more interested in the Unity uh, way of doing things, but uh, we're going to go ahead and extract. There we go. Okay, so now there's Unity. Sweet. All right, so now I can keep my focus and restraint, plus I get the power of Unity on myself and go ahead and throw a, another Unity on uh, on um, Cormac or Arena or whoever, right? Linden, and it's just awesome. That's just so incredible, right? Uh, let's do it again. Ring of Royal Grandeur, right? I've got this uh, this extra Ring of Royal Grandeur. I don't really need it. Transmute it. There we go. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so now what I want, is, if, or what I can do if I want to, is I can have uh, I can have one less of these pieces. Let's say I don't want to uh, to have the the foundation of light boots. Maybe instead, wait for it. Ice climbers. Yes. I can. Uh, well, these are intelligence, but. <laughs> I, I, I could go ahead and extract that power as well if I want to. Um, the gain immunity to, to freeze, or what else would be awesome? The um, I was thinking this might be good too. Boots of Disregard gain uh, 10,000 life regen per second for each second you stand still. Yeah, why not? That sounds pretty baller to me. Alright, so now I've got... I've got the Ring of Royal Grandeur sort of equipped, and it's allowing me to go ahead and put on uh, a completely different set of boots. That's incredible right there. I love that. That's really, really badass. Of course, you can do this for amulets as well. So, for example, you could probably combine... Let's, let's go ahead and take a look at the list, since there's a list, that, which is amazing. We can go ahead and... Um, I've actually got the Countess amulet on, but I can extract the power from uh, uh, the Kaleidoscope and have that applied, so I'll be immune. Dude, that would be insane, right? I'll be immune to Arcane Ice Climbers, and from where Ice Climbers, and the Kaleidoscope, right? Which is going to uh, uh, make me immune to all poison effects. That's such an, an insane amount more of survivability right there for climbing Griffs. That's, an, that's amazing. Like, it... Uh, I, I, I'm almost about to call it OP. It's it's, but I just, it's so cool. Like, I don't know. Anyway, okay. So, what else? What I was gonna do? Yeah, well, okay, if I want to, I could do the same for uh, the belt. But let's actually take a look because there's more recipes, right? But I'm I'm not gonna spend as much time on on them as I did for this first one. But let's just quickly go over them, right? The the law of cool reforge a legendary item. This one takes a considerable amount more of these rare materials, and that's why, as much as I would love to, to try it right now, I don't want to do it just yet because I want to, to keep the materials that I have. With the queue times, it's kind of hard flipping games to be able to do more bounties, so um, I'm going to hold on to these for now, but I imagine that it works just as well. What this does, what reforging a legendary does is, okay, let's say, for example, this angel hair, maybe it isn't uh, for whatever reason. Uh, rolled the way that I want it to uh, to be. Maybe it doesn't have vitality. All the other stats are just poop, right? Um, I can take this angel hair braid. I can put it in there with all these materials, including 50 forgotten souls, and reforge it. And what that will do is it will basically... It will be like dropping the legendary all over again, right? So you'll have all new stats and the possibility of it being an ancient or a non-ancient. You have to be careful about this. If you were trying to, maybe I'm, I'm trying to do it with the string of ears, there's a very good chance that if I were to reforge the string of ears, it would come back as a non-legendary, which is uh, eh, not something I want to do. Got to be careful about that. Okay, so the next recipe that we have uh, after that is the Hope of Cain. You can upgrade a rare item. So, uh, you would take a rare item, in the case I've got this ring, I'm thinking maybe something cool might happen from this. I can add the crystals, let's see, we don't need forgotten souls, dust, reusable parts, and death breath. Was it? Yep, okay, so now, transmute that. Not bad, I got an ancient 
wailing host out of that. So I took uh, a handful of materials from the um, from just arcane dust and veil crystals, uh, just any rare item that you have, right? Uh, you can take that. Yeah, it has to be a rare item, so a yellow item, and you can upgrade that into a legendary, which sounds pretty awesome. I really, really like that idea, and that's pretty sick that it rolled a um, that it rolled an ancient my first time. That's badass. Okay, cool. So now, uh, let's see, next recipe, skill of Nilfer, convert set item. Okay, this is something also that, uh, that sounds really interesting. Um, do I have any extra set pieces? I do, actually. Let's take, okay, I've got this Captain Crimson's Panzer over here. This is, this is interesting, too. Take a look at this. Every time I, I do this, it's like dropping a book for me, although it looks like it dropped two books. I never stopped looking for Kanai's cube. Finally, I learned that they had entrusted it to a secret society of barbarians. The last of these, Kanai, died in Baal's invasion of Seshron. His spirit guards it still, and he is unlikely to give it to me. But I know someone who can impress even the mighty Kanai. <laughs> Zoltan cool, you dog. Alright, that's pretty badass though. You're actually getting some, uh, some history books out of um, out of your transmutations. It seems like every time uh, you do this, it, you, you use the cube, you'll get a book that uh, starts giving you some lore, which is great, because I'm such a lore nerd for this game. <laughs> All right, so convert set item, right? So let's say, let's say that this is actually something cooler than Captain Crimson's thrust. Um, maybe it's uh, maybe it's a rolling piece, or maybe it's one of the uh, the new light pieces. Maybe I've got two of these gloves, and I really want the the headpiece or something like that. For example, what you'll be able to do then is then you can sort of kind of like reforging the legendary. You'll be able to reforge the set piece to become another one of the uh, the set pieces. Okay, so we need forgotten souls and death's breath, transmute. <clears throat> Crafted, <clears throat> crafted items cannot be used. That's interesting. What am I doing wrong? Set item, death's breath, forgotten soul. Maybe Captain Crimson's is not a piece that it wants to do that with. Well, I've got a couple of other... I've got some demon hunter pieces that I threw over here on the floor. Let's try that. Maybe, maybe it doesn't like the crafted versions of legendary set pieces. That was it. Okay, that's interesting. I'm not sure if Blizzard intended that or not. But you can you can only do it, it seems, with non-crafted set pieces. Um, I might make a post about that to uh, to give them feedback. So what I had was um, was one particular shadow coil piece, and now I've got uh, another. Interesting. Very very cool. I can see some potential for. Uh, for maybe solving some headaches with uh, with that. Okay, the next is work of Catherine. Remove level requirement. This is interesting. I suppose this would be for people that are um, that are making new characters or whatever. If you want to, let's say you've got a really badass sword that you want um, a level one character to use, then that's how you would accomplish it. Uh, you can take the equipable item, you can put it here, and with a rank 25 or higher gem of ease, which is a legendary gem, right? Then, uh, then you can use that to transmute and uh, and remove the the level requirement. Now, I don't have a, a rank 25 gem of ease, and I'm not entirely sure. I really doubt it would actually consume. Would it? That's 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 my one question I have about that. I, I was thinking about that the other day. I was like. It wouldn't actually use the legendary gem, like like for example, one of these crafting materials, and then you would lose the gem because that would be that would be terrible. <laughs> I would think. Um, I don't know, but I can see some people maybe wanting to to experiment with that. All right, next up on page six, we have darkness of radiment that you can actually convert gems. Maybe you've got a ton of, say for example, these uh, Imperial Rubies. Maybe you are trying to re-roll on the Mystic who just continuously is using up your Imperial Amethysts, the purple gems, uh, without actually giving you the stat that you want. You run out, you want more. This could be a way of, uh, of getting more of another color gem that you want uh, for whatever reason. And then on page 7 we have Anger of Ibn Fad. Uh, this is something that looks 
interesting. You can basically convert crafting materials um, from, let's say, 100 maybe reusable parts to, uh, to something else. So let's try that. We'll take uh, 100 reusable parts. I'm going to drop those in there. We need a death's breath. And normal magic or rare equipable item. Rare or equipable item. I don't actually have anything like that. Um, <laughs> hang on a second. Actually, let's take a look at, um, at what Kanako has in her inventory. She's actually here uh, with me. I'm using her as, uh, as sort of <clears throat> another account to help me fish for... Uh, fish for open games that I can play and also it helps me to kind of change characters. All right, there she is. Does she have anything? She does not. Well, here's how we're going to solve this then. We'll go over to Kadala. Let's, um, let's see. I could use a chess beast and I get poop. Okay, so thank you, Kadala. I've got poop, but it's poop that I can use. Here is a yellow chess piece. Let's take this over here to um, page seven again. Drop that in there, drop our reusable parts in equipable item. Normal magic or rare equipable item, and then transmute. There, okay, so... Ah, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. So the, the equipable item acts as the, the catalyst of sorts to, to be what you're aiming to get more of. In this case, because it was a, uh, a yellow chess piece, what it gave me was a hundred or so, right? I, that's, that's what I converted, right? A hundred to a hundred? A hundred reusable parts to a uh, hundred veiled crystals. That's, that's pretty interesting. I know I've been running out of arcane dust a lot with certain, uh, certain recipes for crafting certain items, or actually it has a lot to do with uh, the mystic and <laughs> and re-rolling stats like she just eats up all my arcane dust just because I'm trying to get like 5% crit hit chance. But anyway, um, there you have it guys. There is the demonstration on the, the Kanai Cube. This thing is insanely powerful. It blows my mind. The more that I think about it, all the possibilities now for builds in Diablo 3. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see... Just some really crazy builds come out of uh, come out of this new system for the game. This, like I said, is the biggest thing to happen to Diablo 3 since Reaper of Souls and the and the patch 2.0. All the changes back then. This is just revolutionary right here for this game. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Uh, what do you think of the Kanai Cube? Do you think that it's overpowered? Uh, have you had any chance to try it out maybe yourself? I would love to hear from other people that maybe are on the PTR messing around with the Kanai Cube. I know it's kind of hard to get onto the PTR right now because there's so many people that are, are trying to uh, do just this, trying to experiment with the cube or experiment with Torment and stuff like that. But um, the PTR should uh, should be lasting, I would imagine, for like maybe a couple of weeks at the very least because of all these changes and things that need to be tested. When it goes live, then you guys will, of course, then have your chance to be able to mess with this. And I highly, highly recommend that uh, that you do. If you've been out of Diablo 3 for a while, you want to come back and, and mess around with this cube because I guarantee you it will entertain you for, for quite some time. My name is Kinetic. Thank you guys for watching these uh, Diablo 3 videos here on the channel. Um, I appreciate all you guys subscribing, commenting, clicking the like button and stuff like that. This is something that for a long time was just kind of a game that I was doing sort of on the side because um, I didn't think very many people wanted to, to see these videos, but I'm looking at the, the views, which is pretty cool, and uh, the enthusiasm is there, so I'm, I'm really going to focus more uh, as Diablo 3 as one of my, my core games that I'm going to continue to play and make videos for. The build videos have been doing really great uh, as far as view count and, and comments and stuff like that. People seem to enjoy those. Look forward to more Diablo 3 videos here on the channel, and of course, I'm going to be live streaming uh, at least every Saturday on Twitch.tv tv slash kinetic live come hang out at the live streams i may be playing diablo 3 i may be some playing something entirely different uh either way it'd be awesome to see you guys in the uh in the chat box that's it for now guys thanks again for watching my name is kinetic and i'll see you next time